Hello there. Wanted to do another quick video, um, this time about common radioactive sources that you might find in a, uh, like a, a secondhand or vintage or thrift shop or an antique shop. Um, and I've got a few of these things sort of grouped. Um, you'll have to pardon the camera here and there because I'm recording one handed. So sometimes I'll need to kind of change the camera angle. But anyway, so some of the more common things you'll find are plates that are this kind of fluorescent green color and maybe a milky color, a milky green color like this one and sometimes a yellow color. Um, and there are others uh, and there are others that I will not be showing you here today because I don't have examples of them. But um, yeah, some of these some of these things that you can find are actually pretty radioactive, or fairly radioactive, depending on what they are. So, and I've got to say, shout out to my friend Chris who uh, gave me this sample, these little these little watch hands here, and the thoriated lantern mantle. Um, yeah, thanks for that big time. And uh, anyway, so. What's kind of interesting about this stuff is that it actually contains um, small amounts of uranium and they used it to produce the colors that you see there. And as I'm shining a black light on it, you can kind of see that it fluoresces. Uh, here, the light. So as I shine a black light, you can see these fluorescing. And that's actually the uranium compounds in the glass fluorescing. So that's kind of a cool thing. Um, and then you've got some more things that are made out of uranium. So this isn't actually a Fiesta Ware brand, um, carafe, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it does have this really beautiful orange glaze. It's actually, again, another um, glaze that they made with uranium. Um, same thing with this plate here. It's kind of interesting. And then we get over here to some of these things. So these are pretty interesting. Um, so this clock, for example, um, the hands and the bigger dots next to like the, you know, like the 12 and the 11 and the 10 and the 9 and so on and so forth, um, those dots and those hands are actually painted with radium. Um, so if you've ever heard about the radium girls, um, is what they're called, they would paint radium onto um, like watch hands like these or uh, onto clocks and things like that and in some cases you can find old aviation instruments like this switch here um, that have radium in them. The uh, the chemicals like in all the cases of these radium samples the chemicals that would glow um, when exposed to the radiation from the radium have like long since broken down and are no longer working but they're actually a pretty significant source of radiation as I'll show you in a minute here. And then finally we have thoriated lantern mantles. So, and I don't know exactly why it is, but they actually coat um, some lantern mantles with thorium, which is actually uh, fairly radioactive as well, as you'll see. But yeah, so these are some common radiation sources you can find. Um, and I like to check these with a the Geiger counter. So, which I have here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this guy off. And you can see right now it's set on the times one scale. Let's see if I can show you that. There you go, times one. So what I'll do is I'll put the a source next to the probe. And I'm just gonna kinda go through these pretty quickly. So here's this first yellow uranium glass. And put the probe on it. You can see that we get some. I'll flip it over and I can probably get a better reading. Because the way that the probe's able to sit on it closer. So you're getting maybe five, about 500 counts a minute of, you know, it'll be mixed alpha, beta, and gamma. Um, yeah, mostly alphas though, coming off of the uranium-238 um, base things. So Here's a plate, and I'm going to do these in order of how, uh, how many counts they'll produce. So this plate will give us Somewhere in, the, somewhere in the area, 15, 16, maybe up to 2,000 counts per minute. And then 
this guy. And if you've watched other videos of mine, you'll see, you've seen me use this. But, depending on how you get it on the, there we go. So I've been able to get around 2,500 counts per minute off of this. So, and these are all uranium glassware. Um, these, this guy's not so hot, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. This kind of off-white color. The 1,000 counts a minute there, not too much. Then, the quote-unquote Fiesta wear. This stuff will get kind of interesting. So, I'm going to have to change the scale on the meter, but I'll watch you won't let you see it top out anyway. So, over 5,000 counts a minute, so I'm going to switch the knob to times 10. So, it's about 20,000 counts a minute, mostly alpha particles. And I will only use two of these radium sources. So, first the clock. This thing's going to give you a ton of counts. So, I'm going to leave it on the times 10 scale. So, and this is a beta and gamma emitter. So, this is actually pretty, this is actually fairly hot. So, it's 25,000 counts a minute. Or, sorry, 2,500 counts a minute, not 25,000. And then I'll do this little tiny toggle switch with this little teeny amount of uh, radium encased in this glass vial in the tip of it. This is kind of a hard sample to set down. So now... And again, this is basically beta and gamma for the most part. The glass um, will be blocking this and the plastic would have blocked any alphas on the clock. So there's that. Now, here's the thorium lantern mantle. So we get a reading off of this guy. And this is also double layered in plastic bags, so it's gonna shield some of the, some of the betas and there will be no alphas to get through. So that's about yeah, eh, 5,000 counts a minute, so or, or thereabouts. But anyway, so kind of an interesting thing to think about, though, is uh, a lot of this stuff was manufactured a while ago. And uh, so if you think about someone maybe in like somewhere in the 40s or 60s, um, and you think about it this way, you uh, wake up in the morning, if you're a pilot, you wake up in the morning, you look at this clock and see what time it is. This thing's been sitting next to your head, uh, we'll say for eight hours during the night. Then you put on a watch to go to work with radium watch hands in it and you're being exposed to that on your wrist. And then you have a nice breakfast, pour some nice acidic, you know, orange juice in the carafe. Um, which will actually pull some of the uranium out of the glaze because it's acidic. And then you eat your eggs off of your plate. You know, or maybe you could have used these, any of these things, um, which would not have been as bad because I don't think there's as much uranium in them. And then you go to work and fly aircraft, which are full of instruments that are painted with radium. So like a toggle switch, the gauges and dials from the aircraft, maybe the compass in your survival kit or pocket, whatever. So you can actually see how um, surrounding yourself with a lot of radioactive items as they used, especially used to back in the day um, might add up to accumulated doses. So it's kind of an interesting thing. But anyway, yeah, I figured I would uh, kind of show you a little bit about that and kind of create a narrative that might help you understand how you can accumulate radiation doses um, with having a bunch of like fairly radioactive consumer products around you day in and day out. Anyway. Cheers.